Ever since news broke out that Diddy's assistant Fonsworth Bentley escaped from Diddy, the internet has been in a wild frenzy. Speculations are being made regarding this fiasco. What might have pushed Fonsworth? Or should I say who? But Fonsworth is seemingly done with keeping his lips sealed, and he is here to let the whole world know exactly what Diddy did to make him run for the hills. And let's just say none of it is pretty, especially for Diddy's already tarnished reputation. Fonsworth might have gained all his fame and popularity because of Diddy, but he is at a point where he really doesn't think all that media attention was worth it. Back in the early 2000s, he suddenly gained overnight fame as Diddy's personal assistant and valet. Please don't make me go back to work on Monday uh, at the restaurant. He replied, come to 1396 Third Avenue. I literally started that day training as his assistant. The rest is history. At that time, Diddy was going through a crisis. He was charged with alms possession and apparently wanted to get a clean slate. He changed his name from Puff Daddy to P. Diddley. It was at that time that his public appearances included this mysterious umbrella man. People started raising their suspicions that Diddy was into a bizarre humiliation kink and was probably making the poor guy serve him because of his fetish. Turns out the reality was even worse. Unfortunately, the world soon came to find out things were way too personal between him and Diddy. They are alleged to have a relationship that was Siwal in nature. But that is not the worst part. Their relationship had a lot more indecency going on. All thanks to Jaguar Wright for bringing an important fact out to light. What do you think Diddy and Fonsworth Bentley's real relationship was? Concubine. Now one might think a person as talented as hardworking did not need to be anybody's slave to achieve what he did. But here is the thing. Being under Diddy's supervision meant a great deal at that time. We might have seen him hold his umbrella over Diddy anywhere they went, but that is not where his duties ended. In fact, that was the easiest part of his job. Following Diddy like a shadow and holding out an umbrella over Diddy's head. As time passed, it became quite clear that Fonsworth was more of a sugar baby than an assistant. He was hired to keep Diddy's dirty laundry under wraps. Somebody was bound to clean his mess after all. And since he was with Diddy for years, he might have seen and heard a lot. And in exchange for his silence, he was paid heavily. But that is not it. Fonsworth got more rewards. He became a TV personality, writer and musician within a span of days. And today, he is a successful actor, all thanks to Diddy's grooming lessons, if you know what I mean. For those who don't get it, allow me to explain. There have also been theories that Fonsworth was yet another victim of Diddy. You know the kind of victim Diddy takes under his shadow in the name of grooming and ruins? For those who don't get it, Fonsworth was seemingly Diddy's S slave, who not only kept media attention away from Diddy while he was getting down and dirty with other male celebrities of that time, but also was in a weird master-slave relationship with Diddy himself. And these are not mere speculations. Cassie, who has very recently filed a lawsuit against Diddy with a whole Pandora of allegations, also hints at Fonsworth helping him arrange freak-off sessions. For those who are not aware, Diddy would ask people to perform inappropriate acts with each other or on him during these sessions, and Cassie mentioned in her lawsuit that she was forced to take part. But the more important point here is that Diddy's assistants helped him organize those. Now we are all smart enough to figure out who she might be talking about. Even though Diddy's legal team has denied all these allegations, saying, Mr. Combs vehemently denies these offensive and outrageous allegations. For the past six months, Mr. Combs has been subjected to Ms. Ventura's persistent demand of 30 million, under the threat of writing a damaging book about their relationship, which was unequivocally rejected as blatant blackmail. Despite withdrawing her initial threat, Ms. Ventura has now resorted to filing a lawsuit riddled with baseless and outrageous lies, aiming to tarnish Mr. Combs's reputation and seeking a payday. Things are clearly not turning in Diddy's favor because Cassie's lawyer has added more fuel to the fire by claiming that Mr. Combs offered Ms. Ventura eight figures to silence her and prevent the filing of this lawsuit, he said. She rejected his efforts. This lawsuit is just another key which evidently brings to light Fonsworth's role as Diddy's assistant. Another fact to notice is that Fonsworth vanished from Diddy's limelight as quickly as he came and now is back to tell his tale following the exact same pattern as any of Diddy's other victims. Take Usher, for example. Jaguar Wright connected these dots for our ease way before the rest of the world figured it out. I think the thing that everybody is having a hard time grasping is how that whole thing could have probably went down. But the thing is, is it was how fast he disappeared. Now, rumors say that it was Diddy who blacklisted Fonsworth from the industry. But why? Well, because he might have sensed that his ex-assistant could be a possible danger in the near future, more so if he makes a huge name in the industry and becomes influential. So Diddy did what he knew best, 
wiped off Fonsworth's popularity and left him to fend for himself. But this is where things took a turn. Kanye West helped Fonsworth get back on his feet and gave him work. Fonsworth re-established himself as a musician. Around that time, he also found his way to God, and today he is living in Atlanta with his wife. Why Atlanta, though? Well, because according to Jaguar Wright, Atlanta is like a gay mecca where the black community goes to repent after living a bisexual gay life. Atlanta is like a gay mecca. You would think that there would be no need for download culture, but download culture is thriving in Atlanta still. And ever since things have turned against Diddy, literally everybody in close association with Diddy has turned their backs on him, including Bentley. He regrets keeping his silence over Diddy's deepest, darkest secrets, and it seems like he is screaming at the top of his lungs that he is done being Diddy's puppet. Now, the next question is, will Fonsworth have the courage to expose Diddy? Are we looking at a probable lawsuit against Diddy? Because he is well ahead on the way already. This might not be the first time Fonsworth has mustered up the courage to point out Diddy's ill ways. In one of the podcasts some years back, he admitted that he wasn't getting paid well initially. In fact, he earned much more at his last restaurant job as compared to at Diddy's. He's not paying that much. Yeah, no way. At all. <laughs> not initially, but you know, you get, you get in, you get your hustle, and then you, 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 you get it in. There were also instances where fans noticed that Diddy was rather rude and harsh towards him. One such instance would be at Fonsworth's TV show where he was on a call with Diddy and he disrespectfully hung up. This is your problem, man. Good luck to you. Um, uh -huh. and when I get there, everything better be on point. On another occasion, Fonsworth revealed how Diddy would take too long to answer him. He would just make you wait for hours upon hours before he would reply with clipped responses. When you ask him, if you're patient enough, he'll answer. And he'll be real specific. And I was sitting there and I'm looking like 20 minutes. I'm just imagine. This is enough proof that Diddy mistreated Fonsworth to the point that he decided enough was enough and escaped him. This is where we stop and think about why it took Fonsworth so long to take action. If he really was a victim in all of this, then why didn't he step up before? Well, the truth is that Fonsworth is still not too upfront about this issue. He is living a rather quiet life away from the media attention with his wife and kids. But all these allegations and speculations regarding Diddy, which have now started to encompass Fonsworth, are making him uncomfortable. So it will be a matter of time before the dam bursts and Diddy's secrets are out. And that would also mean that Fonsworth himself won't be spared from the repercussions. He might have been a victim, but he did a pretty good job covering Diddy's tracks, and that might not work in his favor. Jean Deal, Diddy's ex-bodyguard, also reflected upon Fonsworth's decision to lead a quiet life. And according to him, Fonsworth has his own skeletons to hide. This was a quiet life now, but he's Yeah, he should. Yeah. He should. He ain't say nothing about me either. Because he know I know his business. So, does that mean Fonsworth is shying away from digging up old graves in fear that he might be the one suffering the most from it? Maybe. At least his fans think so. One person says, he probably wishes people would forget about him and leave him out of it. He is married with children. I doubt he wants those old bones dug up. While some fans think he is not being confrontational because he fears what Diddy can do, one person says, it might be for his own personal safety that he doesn't come forward. Maybe when Diddy is behind bars, he may feel more safe to come forward. It won't be odd to expect Diddy to retaliate in some way. He has done that in the past. He still has the power and influence to do so. So Fonsworth would have to tread carefully if he really is on an exposed Diddy agenda, or things could backfire. Now this chapter has just started in Diddy's life, and there is a lot to expect. But that's all from our side for today, folks. We'll be back with more videos. Until then, take care and goodbye.